The top, sto the top stories tonight in Y News. Norwegian authorities are now investigating the cause of the death of 29 elderly people who were administered with Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccines. The Philippine government is pushing for legislation to compensate those who would suffer adverse effects from the COVID-19 vaccines. And the sixth Wish Music Awards pioneers a groundbreaking new normal in the music industry. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Monday, January 18, 2021. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the country and in other parts of the world. I am William Theo. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the country and in other parts of the world. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts in our website, untvweb.com. I'm Angelo Castro III. First in the news. Health authorities in Norway have been told to conduct more thorough evaluations of very frail elderly patients in line to receive the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine against COVID-19 following the death of several elderly people after receiving the shot. Early Briones will tell us why. The Norwegian Medicines Agency first reported on Thursday that 23 elderly people had died in a short time after receiving their first dose of the Pfizer vaccine, 13 of which may have suffered from deadly side effects. However, the number of deaths has been updated to 29 people as of Sunday, according to Bloomberg. According to the agency, all deaths are linked to the Pfizer vaccine, which was the only one available in the country until Friday. Officials listed fever, vomiting, and nausea as side effects, which may have led to the deaths of some frail patients, Sigurd Hortemo of the Norwegian Medicines Agency said. The latest death, which all occurred among patients in nursing homes, prompted officials to adjust their advice on who gets the COVID-19 vaccine, leaving it up to the individual doctors to decide who should be vaccinated. However, Norwegian officials maintain they are not alarmed and that allergic reactions to vaccines are still very rare. Meanwhile, with Australia just weeks away from kicking off vaccination programs, upon approval of the Therapeutic Goods Administration, Australian authorities are now demanding more information from Norwegian authorities before the program starts next month. Australia is due to administer 10 million doses of the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine and 54 million doses of the AstraZeneca-Oxford vaccines for its COVID-19 response. Early Briones, UN TV News and Rescue Australia, we serve the people, we give glory to God. Meanwhile, despite the reported deaths in Norway, American drug maker Pfizer will keep the emergency use authorization issued by the Philippines Food and Drug Administration. Aiko Miguel will tell us why live. Uh, yes, Aiko, good evening. Yes, William, good evening. Health Undersecretary Maria Rosario Verjeres said the American drug maker Pfizer needs to submit a report to the Food and Drug Administration on the reported deaths of elderly people with serious underlying health conditions in Norway after receiving Pfizer shots. Pending the report and review, the EUA or the Emergency Use Authorization for Pfizer vaccine will stay. Here is Undersecretary Maria Rosario Verjeres, the spokesperson of the Department of Health. Once we evaluate the report no, at base dun sa kanilang conclusion, that's the time that the Food and Drug Administration can decide on the EUA of uh, Pfizer here in the country. So for now, hanggang wala pang malaking uh, sufficient evidence no, to say na talagang iyan ay caused by the vaccine, uh, tayo po ay status pa rin dito sa ating binigay na EUA ng Pfizer. William, according to Food and Drug Administration Director General Eric Domingo, they will possibly revise Pfizer's EUA based on the results of Norwegian authorities' investigation. According to FDA, this is part of the process on surveillance and monitoring of COVID-19 vaccines with EUA. 
The DOH and the FDA assures all potential COVID-19 vaccines will be thoroughly evaluated by experts. FDA will also release details on who cannot receive certain kind of COVID-19 vaccines that will be procured by the government. And that is the latest live. Back to you, William. Thank you, Aiko Miguel, our health correspondent reporting live. Vaccine czar Carlito Galvez Jr. said the government is pushing for a legislation to compensate those who would suffer adverse effects from COVID-19 vaccines. Ray Pelayo explains why. During the hearing of the House Committee on Health for the Vaccination Program of the Government, Vaccine Czar Secretary Carlito Galvez suggested to lawmakers to pass an indemnification bill. This is to compensate those who will suffer serious adverse effects from COVID-19 vaccines or other vaccine-related injuries. Napakahalaga po nito dahil kasi yung COVAX po, required po tayo na meron tayong indemnification law. Uh, Alahanin po natin meron yes. po tayo yung 40 million po na, no, 40 million na doses uh, na nakasalalay po dito. Mas maganda po sana yung po ang inano namin na magkaroon ng bayan ni Henry na isama na rin po yung, ano, yung indemnification clause. The proposal is also supported by the Food and Drug Administration. No, sa iba pong bansa, katulad po ng Estados Unidos o kaya po sa United Kingdom, talaga pong nakabatas yun kapag po tayo ay nagmakuna, knowing that we are doing it for the good of the whole population and that it's always possible that somebody might get a very unusual, severe reaction to it. Kapag po nagkaroon ng vaccination industry na, na, ng injury, meron po talagang sa batas nila na indemnification or compensation. Para po doon sa nabakunahan. The government assured the public that they are doing their best to secure sufficient supply of vaccines to reach its 70% target population. That's why ang ginawa po natin, sinecured po natin yung 148 million na volumes which is good for second quarter and third quarter. But now ang ginawa natin because of our good negotiation with, uh, with, uh, with uh, India and also China, nag-front load yung China ng more or less 5 million sa first quarter, another 5 to 8 million sa second quarter. The official said that vaccination program will possibly roll out next month, giving prioritization to highly urbanized cities where COVID-19 cases are high. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. The Philippines has a binding obligation concerning the possible purchase of COVID-19 vaccine doses from China's Sinovac, but it is still subject to conditions, according to Malacanang. Rosalie Cos explains why. Malacanang refutes the statement of the Department of Finance that the term sheet signed between the Philippines and China's Sinovac Biotech is not a done deal. Last Senate hearing, Finance Undersecretary Mark Hoven told Senators last week that the Philippines cannot proceed with its order of 25 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines if Sinovac Biotech cannot comply with the regulatory process of the Food and Drug Administration. However, the palace said that two parties now have obligations under the agreement and are subject to condition. Kontrata na po yan. Kaya nga lang po, yung pangalawang obligasyon at ito po yung talagang pagbibili ay nakasubject po sa kondisyon na pinag-agrihan ng mga partido. Ano po itong isa sa mga kondisyon nito? Siyempre po, yung approval ng FDA. But that is already, already a binding obligation. Meanwhile, Dr. Ron Jean Solante, a member of the government's vaccine experts panel, believes that a COVID-19 vaccine must not only be considered for its efficacy rate. This is following reports that Sinovac vaccine has only 50% efficacy rate during the clinical trials in Brazil. Kasi hindi lang naman prevention of infection ang tinitingnan natin. In fact, ang pinaka, isa sa pinaka-importante na parameter sa isang bakuna, pag nabakunahan ka, ma-prevent mo ba yung severe disease over that of the mild? Kasi ang mild naman, you don't need a, a higher risk of mortality, but the severe disease is where you can really say that if this vaccine can prevent severe disease, then I would choose that over that even if it's 50% efficacy rate niya. According to Malacanang, 50,000 doses of Sinovac vaccine Coronavac will arrive in the country on February 20. This will be administered to healthcare workers once emergency use authorization is issued by the Food and Drug Administration. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. 
The Department of Health reiterates that the government cannot disclose the prices of COVID-19 vaccines while negotiations are still ongoing. Aiko Miguel will tell us why. Prices of COVID-19 vaccines circulated online as issued by the Office of Senate Committee on Finance, Senator Juan Edgardo Sani Angara. Based on the data, Sinovac is the second most expensive COVID-19 vaccine, one of the vaccines which the government aims to procure. Posted vaccines prices also gained different comments from netizens. Senator Angara said the list of prices came from the DOH during a Senate hearing two months ago. But according to the DOH, the prices that were published by vaccine manufacturers were used for estimates. We had to get the market prices no, that posted in the internet and the specific websites para makakuha lang kami ng estimation magkano ba kakailanganin ng gobyerno para makabili tayo ng mga ganitong bakuna. So these uh, prices that were posted, ito of course, kinuha ng ating legislators kasi nga po, eh, galing naman sa official source DOH. Pero ang tagal na po nung panahon na lumipas. Under Secretary Rita it- that the prices of vaccines is part of the confidentiality disclosure agreement or CDA between the government and the vaccine manufacturer. But now, just to be clear, meron na pong mga presyong negotiated na, no? at iyan po yung mga naka-enclose dito sa CDAs ng bawat manufacturers. Meanwhile, Malacanang refutes reports that the government procured higher prices of vaccines. Hindi magkakalayo ang presyo ng bakunang Sinovac sa presyo na binili po ng Indonesia. Ito nga po ay mahigit kumulang, ulitin ko po, no? mahigit kumulang 650 pesos per dose at hindi naman po uh, lalampas sa 700 peso. The DOH, however, assured the Filipinos will be provided the best vaccines at the most ideal prices. Aiko Miguel, UNT News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. A palace official said the public must trust the experts when it comes to COVID-19 vaccines and not comedians. He emphasized the vaccines cannot be compared with laundry soap. Rosa Licoz will tell us why. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque seemed to refer to someone during his press briefing when he reminded the public to trust the vaccine experts on potential vaccines to be used in the country. The palace official said the Philippines cannot choose which vaccines to take because the supply is limited, but assured that the vaccines to be administered to people are those approved by regulatory authorities in the country. Alam niyo po, mali naman na ikukumpira ang bakuna sa sabon na panlaba. Ang katunayan po, wala naman pong supply na ganong kadami. Nag-aagawan nga po tayo sa 18% na available na supply. Pangalawa, Hindi lang naman po ito gagamitin para sa damit. Kaya nga po, hindi lang isa, hindi lang dalawa, hindi tatlong grupo pa ng eksperto ang magsusuri kung ang mga bakuna ay ligtas at epektibo. Last week, comedian Vice Ganda tweeted that if people can be choosy on what brand of laundry soap to use, much more with COVID-19 vaccines. The comedian reacted to the statement of Roque that Filipinos cannot choose which specific brand of COVID-19 vaccine they want to receive because of the availability of the vaccines. Kung hindi naman natin pagtitiwalaan ang mga experts na tatlong batches of experts pa ang magsasabing pwede natin gamitin yan at magiging basihan para mag-issue uh, ng FDA ang EUA, eh sino ating pagkakatiwalaan? Siguro po hindi mga kubidyante. Currently, Pfizer vaccine has been granted emergency use authorization by the Food and Drug Administration, while Chinese Sinovac Biotech, Russian Gamalea Research Institute, and British pharmaceutical AstraZeneca have all applied for an EUA. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. And for those watching us on YouTube, please click the subscribe button you see on the right side of your screen and ring the bell for notification. You may also follow us on Facebook.
The Senate will set another hearing on the COVID-19 vaccination plan of the government this week. Senate President Vicente Soto III made the pronouncement in today's resumption of session of Congress following the concerns of his fellow senators. In his privileged speech, Senator Panfilo Lacson cited the supposed inconsistencies in the statements of key government officials during last week's Committee of the Whole hearings, particularly on the issue of Chinese firms Sinovac vaccine. Lacson said some resource persons who are in charge of the vaccine program were not honest in their responses. He also echoed the earlier suggestion of Senate Majority Leader Miguel Zubiri to conduct an executive session due to the confidentiality disclosure agreement being invoked by vaccine czar Cardito Galvez Jr. on the prices of vaccines. However, Senate President Soto, who chairs the Committee of the Whole, said an executive session will be done only if necessary and if proper motion is approved. Earlier, Senate Minority Leader Franklin Drillon also shared the call for the continuation of the Senate's inquiry, noting that issues on efficacy and safety of the vaccines must be clarified to bring back the public's full trust and confidence on the government's vaccination program. Leon, ang sinasabi ko, that confidence is still lacking. Bakit po? Issues of safety, issues of, of, uh, of effectivity. At hindi po nakakatulong yung mga conflicting statement tungkol sa presyo. Dahil nag aaral ng taong bayan, baka ba ito ba kita dito? Senator Drillon added that the government spending for the vaccine should also be reviewed. Senator Lacson earlier showed that the government will no longer have to fund almost 70 million doses of vaccines coming from the COVAX facility, those that have been secured by local government units and by the private sector. At least uh, on the initial information, uh, in the long, there is so much inconsistency, uh, including how much is the price and is the price uh, uh, competitive ah uh, wag nating kalimutan ito po ay public funds kaya dapat we must get the best bargain for our people the third senate committee of the whole hearing will be held on friday at 10 a.m Meanwhile, a group of medical experts appeal to the public to refrain from judging any brand of COVID-19 vaccines available in the market, but instead wait for scientific results. John Nano tells us why. To avoid confusions and cause misinformation, medical professionals from the Healthcare Professionals Alliance Against COVID-19 is calling on the public not to jump into conclusions over the efficacy of COVID-19 vaccines. The medical doctors made this statement following several reports condemning some brands of COVID-19 vaccines, particularly those that were manufactured from China. According to Dr. Antonio Danz, the spokesperson of HPAC, it is too early to say if any brand of COVID-19 vaccines is effective or not as studies on the vaccine development are still underway. Ang problema sa Sinovac, wala pa siyang publication no? at uh, meron ng usapan, wala pang publication. Kailangan antay natin yung publication kasi alam naman natin na para ma-publish mo yung report ninyo, inaaral yan ng maraming scientist para siguraduhin na wala kayong sinasabing mali tungkol sa mga resulta. So, hintayin natin at huwag tayong maghuska kaagad na maganda o pangit. Ang hirap sabihin yan, wala pang resultang lumalabas. Dr. Eileen Espina, the National Director of Philippine Academy of Family Physicians, also has the same point of view. Ang lahat po ng bakuna na dapat uh, gagamitin natin ay dadaan po sa isang proseso. So, sa ngayon po hanggang hindi po kumpleto ang datos sa iba't ibang mga bakuna na pinag-uusapan sa media at sa mga kanto at bawat huntahan dyan, um, we are asking po na let us withhold judgment. Hintayin po natin na makumpleto po ang datos. On the other hand, the Department of Health support the position of the HPAC and vows that the national government will be transparent in all the process concerning with the rollout of COVID-19 vaccines and assures that this will be given to the priority population. Ang DOH po kasama ang buong vaccine cluster 
ay patuloy na makikipagtulungan sa HPAC at sa buong scientific committee upang pangalagaan po ang scientifico, makatao at transparent na proseso sa pagpili at pagbili ng bakuna. Amin din pong sisiguraduhin na makakarating ang bakuna sa lahat ng mga ngailangan ito. Joan Nano, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Philippine Red Cross has already completed its study for COVID-19 saliva tests. The PRC was supposed to present the findings of its study today, but asked to have it rescheduled for a later date. Asher Kadapan Jr. details why. The Philippine Red Cross has already collected the results of the 1,000 samples of COVID-19 testing using saliva specimen as ordered by the Department of Health. According to Health Undersecretary Maria Rosario Vergere, Red Cross was supposed to present their analysis to the DOH Laboratory Experts Panel. But the private institution asked for more time, but they should be ready by Wednesday. They were already done with the study. They are just finalizing the analysis. So pag present po sa lab experts panel and it is acceptable, isasubmit na po natin yan sa Health Technology Assessment Council uh, para makapagbigay din sila ng recommendations. The DOH did not confirm how long they will be able to accomplish the validation study of the COVID-19 saliva tests. But before the saliva specimen and COVID-19 testing will finally be approved to be used in the country, Yusek Verjera said that the Red Cross should also secure an approval from the Food and Drug Administration. The DOH explains that the test kits with the saliva specimen should also be tested with reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction or RT-PCR test by the FDA. If all of these are there already, acceptable, may FDA registration, agad-agad po magagamit na natin yan. We can draft a protocol so that the other laboratories can also apply this. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The government is finalizing its guidelines for places that will shift to the new normal classification. Presidential spokesperson Hari Roque said that places with no local COVID-19 cases for a certain period of time has been approved to shift to new normal by the Interagency Task Force Against Coronavirus Disease. However, the palace official believes that until there is no herd immunity in the country, the IATF will remain as the policy-making body of the government against coronavirus disease 2019. But it has been approved in principle po talaga na magkakaroon na ng deklarasyon ng new normal areas. Pero ang binubuo lang po ngayon yung mga do's and don'ts sa new normal. Kasi baka naman magkaroon ng new normal, bigla sila magkaroon ng rock concert. No? Eh, yun po ang lilinawin natin, yung mga do's and don'ts in new normal areas. The Department of Health logged 2,163 new coronavirus cases today, pushing the overall tally to 502,736. Active cases account for 26,839, or 5.3% of the total infected. Davao City contributed the highest number of new infections with 134, followed by Cagayan with 100, Quezon City with 99, Leyte with 93, and Cavite with 75. Recovery slightly rose to 465,988, with only two new recoveries reported on the same day. 14 fatalities were recorded, taking the death toll to 9,909. The DOH said the updated case count does not yet, yet include data from four testing laboratories which failed to submit on time. The Philippine Air Force said that it is early to say that an engine failure caused one of its helicopters to crash in Bukidnon uh, at the weekend. Lea Ilagan will tell us why. The Philippine Air Force is conducting an investigation to determine what caused their UH-1H UE helicopter to crash in Impasugong, Bukidnon. Philippine Air Force spokesperson Lt. Col. Aristides Galang said the results of the investigation is not yet final. Marami po kasi tayong factors na ipinomot si Ter. Hindi po natin masabi kaagad na may problema sa mga hinaing aruptano. 
At present, all UV helicopters up the path were grounded for a thorough maintenance inspection. Seven people, including four airmen, died in the crash. The path rendered military honors to the airmen who died in the tragedy. Leia Ilagan, UNTV. News and the rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. And for those watching us on YouTube, please click the subscribe button you see on the right side of your screen and ring the bell for notification. You may also follow us on Facebook. The, th the 13th person of interest in the death of flight attendant Christine Da Serra belies reports that he will serve as a star witness in the case. Dante Amento tells us why, live. Dante, go ahead. Diego Jake Esteron is the 13th occupant in room 2207 in City Garden Grand Hotel who surfaced at the National Bureau of Investigation or NBI last Friday. Esteron underwent thorough interview, drug, and polygraph tests today. Thus, Esteron clarifies that he will not serve as the star witness in the Christine da Serra case, contrary to reports that surfaced in the past few days. Munta ako dito para i-clarify lahat yung article na lumalabas na ako yung maging star witness. Wala pa pong ganun na nangyayari ako maging star witness kasi nakipag-cooperate lang ako sa NBI regarding the Desera case. He adds that he does not know Christine personally and they met for the first time during the year-ender party and he allegedly left at 5 o'clock in the morning on January 1 before Christine Desera was found unconscious in a bathtub at room 2009. Meanwhile, NBI Deputy Director and Spokesperson Ferdinand Lavin says that their digital forensic team will proceed to examine the data on the mobile phones of the 13 persons of interest. I hope uh, their lawyers will cooperate. The lawyers of the persons of interest will cooperate and submit the uh, mobile phones for uh, examination. As it is now, we have requested uh, the family to turn to us, the turn over to us the uh, mobile phone. If this is available, then uh, we can do some forensics. The NBI believes that they can also gather information through the mobile phone, such as to whom the 2007 occupants communicated before the incident. Taken all together, we have to authenticate the video. Ito ba yung uh, tamang video? Ito ba ay uh, hindi ito na subject sa splicing? Ito ba ay buo? So everything will be considered. Meanwhile, the NBI forensic team has completed its forensic examination on the re-autopsy on Christine da Serra remains and the results are being turned over to the Death Investigation Division of the NBI but Deputy Director Lavina refuses to give details on the results on the forensic examination. And that's the latest live battle, Diego. Thank you, Dante Amento, reporting live on the Christine Terra case. And for the news abroad, here's Elsie Marcos reporting live from Auckland, New Zealand. Good evening, William. Russia's leading Kremlin critic has been detained on return to Moscow five months after being poisoned. Marvi Dolphin will give us the details live. Yes, Marvi? Elsie, Russia's most vocal opposition leader Alexei Navalny has been arrested at a Moscow airport as he tried to enter the country from Germany, where he has spent five months recovering from a near-fatal military-grade nerve agent poisoning that he blames on the Kremlin.
His followers, who had congregated at Vunokovo Airport, where he was expected to land in, were barred from entering the arrival area by dozens of security officials who were mostly in riot gear. Several media broadcasts showed police arresting several allies who were also waiting for him at Vunokovo, which includes politician and lawyer Lyubov Sobol and Rosland Shevedinov, who works for Navalny's anti-corruption foundation. Russia's Federal Prison Service said that Navalny, who has been on the agency's wanted list since December 29, was detained for repeated violations of his parole terms for a 2014 embezzlement conviction. In a tweet, European Council President Charles Michel called for the immediate release of Navalny. Navalny, who is President Vladimir Putin's most prominent and determined foe, brushed concerns about the arrest and decided to leave Berlin with his wife on his own free will and was not under any apparent pressure to leave Germany. Putin, though, refuses to acknowledge Navalny as a legitimate opponent and has described the extensive media coverage and investigations into the poisoning as a fabrication by Western intelligence. Putin also said in December that if Russian security services had wanted to kill Navalny, they would have finished the job. Elsie? All right, Marvi, thank you for that live report. Brazil's health regulator approved the urgent use of coronavirus vaccines made by Sinovac and AstraZeneca. Brazil currently has 6 million doses of Sinovac's Coronavac vaccine ready to distribute in the next few days and is awaiting the arrival of 2 million doses of the vaccine made by AstraZeneca and partner Oxford University. On Saturday night, the health regulator Anvisa rejected an application for use of a Russian vaccine called Sputnik V, submitted by Brazilian company Yunyao Chimica. Anvisa said it didn't meet minimum requirements to start an analysis. Vaccination in Brazil is beginning later than neighbors such as Argentina and Chile, despite a robust public health system and decades of of experience with immunization campaigns. The process to present and approve the COVID-19 vaccines was fraught with conflict as allies of President Jair Bolsonaro sought to cast doubt on the efficacy of the Sinovac shot backed by his political rival, Sao Paulo State's Governor Joao Doria. India has kicked off one of the world's biggest vaccination programs. Meanwhile, the United Kingdom targets to complete their COVID-19 vaccination on adults by September. Ia Devera details us why, live. Yes, Ia? Elsie, being one of the countries that has the most number of coronavirus cases, India has started their biggest immunization program. A sanitation worker is the first Indian to be vaccinated with the first dose of COVID-19 vaccine in India, marking the start of country's effort to immunize more than 1.3 billion people against coronavirus. With a record of more than 10.5 million COVID-19 cases and being the world's second highest, Prime Minister Narendra Modi kick-started the vaccination plan in India and is now considered as one of the world's biggest COVID-19 vaccination drives. Modi paid tribute to the frontliners during his speech and said that they will be the first to get vaccinated. An estimate of 10 million health workers will receive the COVID-19 vaccine on the first round to be followed by other frontline workers. Persons above 50 years of age and anyone under 50 with severe underlying health conditions will be the next priority, aiming to immunize 300 million people against coronavirus by early August this year. Meanwhile, in the United Kingdom, the government has a goal of providing first COVID-19 shots to every adult by September 2021, with the country's concern to more than 51 million adults out of 67.5 million people, UK government will soon start adding more vaccination sites to increase the pace of work. 
Chief Executive of National Health Service Simon Stevens mentioned in one of his interviews that since the last holiday, he'd seen another 15,000 increase in the inpatients in hospitals across England, equivalent of filling 30 hospitals full of coronavirus patients. Britain's health workers are fighting against a more contagious variant of coronavirus. Adding to their battle is the country's cold winter weather that causes infections spread rapidly. The government, however, will not review the lockdown measures until mid-February. By that time, the country plans to provide at least the first dose of vaccine to everyone over 70, as well as to the health workers and to those who are vulnerable to COVID-19. As of today, Britain has three approved vaccines, Pfizer-BioNTech, Moderna, and Oxford-AstraZeneca, while India has given Oxford-AstraZeneca and a domestic product called Covaxine for their immunization program. Elsie? Thank you, Ia Devera, live from Hamilton, New Zealand. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. Back to you, William. Thank you, Elsie Marcos, live from Auckland, New Zealand. Wish 107.5 started jump, jump started its 2021 with a groundbreaking event for the music industry. Mirasol Abogadil will tell us why. The country's top FM station, Wish 1075, staged another milestone in the Philippine music industry with an award show inside not just any venue, but the Big Dome on Sunday, January 17. The radio station of the famed Wish Bus once again proved that it is truly breaking boundaries, that despite the pandemic, it was able to pull off a grand awards night and gathered some of the top Filipino artists at the 6th Wish Music Awards. So nice to see people, you know, get a chance also to perform again. In Araneta! For their fans and live and just to have the, a, a feel of the stage again. The energy, the lights, the music. Oh, it's what so a cool. treat. What, what a, a treat. treat for everybody here tonight. Grabe, ngayon lang ulit ako nakakanta sa Araneta. Ganito pala yung feeling. B-pop sensation SB19 won big at the awards night and was hailed as the Wish Group of the Year, Wishers' Choice, and brought home the Wish Pop Song of the Year award. Pop rock band The Ones also bagged three awards, the Best Quarantine-Produced Song, wish Exclusive Pop Performance of the Year, and wish Exclusive Collaboration of the Year for their performance of Bakit to Nangyari Satin with singer-songwriter Janine Tenyoso. Zild also got a major award, the Breakthrough Artist of the Year, while Pinoy rock icon Glock 9 was hailed as the Wish Artist of the Year. And for the second time, the Wish Music Awards bestowed two prestigious awards to two of the most prominent names in the OPM industry, the KDR Icon of Music and Philanthropy and the KDR Icon of Musical Excellence. Award-winning American rock band Journey frontman Arnel Pineda was named the KDR Icon of Music and Philanthropy for his efforts in helping the Filipino youth get access to quality education, medical support, and other services. Of course, very, very thankful uh, indeed and honored with your generosities. Plus, po, the prize money, uh, the prize money that uh, you're going to. Uh, to give to us, uh, especially to my APFI, my, my foundation, it will surely make a difference in the lives of our scholars. While award-winning singer-songwriter Ray Valera was hailed as the KDR icon of musical excellence for his contribution to the Filipino music industry through the years. Thank you very much. At least, Nakikita ko kung ano ang future ng OPM. Kahit paano, nakikita ko ang direksyon. Kung ano yung mga chord progression nila, ano yung lyrics nila, etc. Para sa akin, importante yun eh. 
dahil kami yung mga nandun sa mga nauna nung araw. Siyempre, gusto makita ko ng mangyayari bukas. Winners of this year's Wish Music Awards received 25,000 pesos each, while their chosen charities received 100,000 pesos each. Among the highlights on Sunday's event was the debut performance at the Wish Awards of OPM royalty Parokya ni Edgar and the award-winning Australian singer-songwriter Guy Sebastian. I On display, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. I want everyone to know. Wish 1075's creator and innovator Kuya Daniel Rezon, who on Sunday graced the event inside the Wish Bus, expressed his gratitude to all OPM artists for keeping their music alive, to heal, to inspire, and to give hope in the face of a pandemic. I wish to tell all of you that your endeavors are very much appreciated. Tang inyong mga awitin at musika ay nananatili para Patuloy na umaliw, patuloy na dumamay sa bawat lumbay, sa bawat pangamba, at sa bawat takot. Meron pong mga titik, merong tinig at tunog na palaging nagbibigay ng mukha at kahulugan sa mga damdamin ito. I would like to thank you all for being our hidden heroes during this difficult time. Kuya Daniel vows to continue helping more Filipino artists by providing an avenue to promote their music and an opportunity to spread goodwill through Wish 1075. Mirasol Abugadil, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The very first Wish Music Awards in the new normal was held last night. Wish 1075 made sure the IATF guidelines were followed. Here's why from Nina Armilio. Despite the pandemic caused by coronavirus disease 2019, the show must go on for OPM artists who deserve to be hailed for their contributions in the OPM industry. And for this to be possible, days before the 6th Wish Music Awards, the production and technical crew, artists, and other personalities that would enter the big dome underwent COVID-19 testing. This was to ensure that everyone present during the event was free from the fatal coronavirus. Wish 1075 teamed up with MaxiCare Healthcare Corporation for the RT-PCR and antigen tests. On the day of the WMA, the production and technical crew members each wore a face mask and a face shield. There were floor markings too as guide for physical distancing. The venue and event were not open to public. Only invited guests who tested negative for the virus were allowed to take part in the WMA. The microphones of WMA hosts Christian Bautista and Gretchen Ho were disinfected. Even the microphones of artists and awardees were disinfected every performance and every speech. These microphones are not allowed to be shared. After almost 10 months since the start of the pandemic, this is the first time the 16,500-seater Big Dome opened its doors once again to a musical festivity. While wishers, although not invited physically at the venue, enjoyed the celebration online through Wish 1075's YouTube channel, Live. Hashtag Wish Music Awards trended on Twitter for several hours too, with more than 200,000 tweets. In the face of the pandemic, surely Wish 1075 has got more in store for artists and wishers. Nina Armilio, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. And those are the reasons behind the news. January 18, 2021, I am William Theo. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold, Evangelo Castro III.
Because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am Harleen Delgado. We serve the people. We give glory to God.